Are you ready for the word? Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Amen. Everybody all right? Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to minister some things I believe that are vitally important for the body of Christ. So please listen good. Tune in. Shake off any heaviness. Amen. Shake it off. Shake it off. Speak to your mind and tell it to be clear to receive. Amen. Because I'm going to look at some, th- I want us to look at something that is vitally important and many times overlooked in the body of Christ. And that is who is the real enemy? I said, who is the real enemy? Amen. Who is the real enemy? T.D. Jake says the real enemy is the one that's in me. The true enemy is the one that's in me. I'm my biggest enemy. Sometimes I'm my biggest hindrance. Sometimes I am my biggest problem. Amen? But there's an, another enemy that's really the real enemy. When someone comes against us and talks about us, when someone hurts us and wounds and wound us, we m- many times get an offense against a person. Many times it's not the person. How many of you know the enemy, Satan himself, will use people sometimes to come against you? How many of you know that? Let's look at Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren. Now, Paul's writing some incredible stuff in the book of Ephesians. He started out in chapter 1, all the promises and the, and the blessings of our inheritance. Uh, And then he goes through the book of Ephesians, strengthening us, talks about marriage, talks about our relationship with each other. And then he ends up this book by saying, finally, brethren. How many of you know, finally, brethren, is the final word. He's closing out the book. Amen. And he's closing out the book. How many of you know, many times when someone's departing, uh, when uh, when mom and dad's going off on vacation and and, and they're leaving the babysitter and the children, how many of you know the final words are important? Before I leave, don't forget, set the alarm. Don't forget to feed the children. Amen. Don't forget the bedtime's 8 o'clock. How many of you know those final words are important? Well, it's Paul saying, finally, brethren. Say with me, finally, brethren. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. I'm in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. These are good scriptures to have underlined in your Bible if you don't have them. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. I underline that word evil day. If you don't think you've ever had one yet, one's coming. (laughs) If you haven't experienced an evil day, it's coming. In the evil day, and having done all, stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your, your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Are you getting the language here? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Hallelujah. Praise God for the reading of his word. For we don't wrestle, it says in verse 12, for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Our battle is not flesh and blood. Are you with me? Many times the things that take place that comes against us is not flesh and blood. Many times the attack that even comes in from other people is not flesh and blood. 
Many times the things that happen uh, that happens on your journey in this in this life as we're walking through life trying to have victory in the Lord, many of the things that try to derail you is not flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, where in heavenly places. Strategy goes on in heavenly places. What does this verse mean? What does it mean when we say the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places or in the heavenly realm? Does it mean in heaven? Or does it mean on the earth? It means both. There is the second heaven the scripture talks about. We live in the first heaven. The second heaven is the space between the third heaven where the throne room of God is and this earth realm. We know that there's spiritual wickedness there because uh, we know when, uh, when Daniel prayed, it took 21 days to get the prayer answer back from the, uh, from, from the angels of the Lord to, to bring the prayer because on the way back with the answer, uh, there was a spiritual war- warfare in the heavenlies by the prince of, by, by the uh, the demonic forces of the prince of Persia uh, that did warfare for 21 days to stop the prayer for coming back. Is anybody with me? So, but, so in the second heaven, there are spiritual uh, demonic forces that are trying to derail and trying to stop and does strategy against you and me. When it talks about the rulers of authority. It's talking about literally uh, those that uh, we recognize uh, that it's not talking about the president. It's not talking about uh, 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 politicians. It's not talking about people. They can be influenced and used by demonic forces, but this is a demonic stronghold that operates in the the second heaven. It's talking about those uh, who, 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 who rule over and put put areas of, uh, of deceit and areas of destruction in the minds of those and start to move against the Christians. It's those who's been put in position to try to stop you and I. How many of you believe that there's strategy against the body of Christ? We don't realize it as much here sometimes in our country, but if you travel around the world, you'll find out that there's spiritual darkness hovering and brooding and moving through uh, black magic and through uh, uh, witchcraft. Uh, those, a lot of countries are under, is, is under control of demonic spirits. In order to understand this uh, verse, uh, we need to look at several things in, in the scriptures. We're not fighting against a human uh, Uh, human bodies we're not fighting against one another we're not fighting against the human aspect we are fighting against the influence of spiritual wickedness in high places we're fighting against forces and authorities and against rulers of darkness and powers in the spiritual world how many of you really believe there is such thing as demonic spirits I can take you all through the word of God. It says that Jesus, uh, Jesus went and, and he, he spoke to the spirits and bound them in his name. He wouldn't let demonic spirits have dominion and have control. He wouldn't let them reign and rule. Uh, but he took authority over those things. Uh, the apostle Paul, uh, we find out in the book of Acts many times that the power of God moved uh, by the anointing of God. Apostle Paul uh, bound the evil spirits. Evil spirits are still, uh, still moving today. Don't lose me this morning because I'm not going to stop there. I have to give us an idea, though, that there are such things as real demonic spirits or we wouldn't be told to put on the whole armor of God. We wouldn't be told, uh, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might if there wasn't some opposition. Many, of the, many times the things that we do battle against and we feel like we're up against the wall, we can't get a breakthrough, many times it's because there's a demonic influence uh, that's trying to operate. Demonic influences can come from generational curses. Demonic influence can be passed down from one generation to the other. Is anybody with me? And many times it'll go into the next generation or it'll be effective in the next generation. We need to know how to take authority over it. We need to know how to protect ourselves against it. I have some facts about these satanic uh, uh, operations. And first of all, uh, let me tell you a couple of things about them. First of all, they're numerous. I said there's many of them. 
They are rulers. Uh, they are principalities and powers. Uh, they are uh, authorities. Uh, these, these different expressions uh, move under the unction of, uh, of demonic influence from, uh, from the, uh, the devil himself. They're numerous. How do we know that uh, they're numerous? Do you remember when Jesus uh, went and, and, and set, the, uh, the, uh, set free the demoniac? How many of you remember that story in the Bible? The demoni demoniac. Remember, he was, he was running through the tombs naked. And he was he was pulling. Uh, he had enough uh, uh, enough power to uh, that they couldn't contain him. And and he said there was a legion of them within him. A legion. Uh, there was there was many of them. They were numerous, and they were tormenting this man. Another thing about demonic forces is they're powerful. I said they're powerful. The demoniac not only uh, was under the influence of demonic forces, but they would chain him, put, uh, put chains and chain him to the walls of the tombs, and he would break the chains. They're powerful, and they'll do damage. Uh, we got to realize, don't think that uh, uh, demonic forces is Casper the friendly ghost. A lot of times we act like you know. Well, it's uh, well, he, you know, he's, he's he can't do much, and and there's not much power there, and not much authority there, and he's and he's bringing people down and destroying people on a daily basis. Are you with me? Uh, we need to understand it, uh, that he plays tricks on you. Uh, the demons are real, and and and, and they're uh, and they're able to uh, they're able to do damage. If we allow them. But let me tell you this. I'm going to tell you this right off. Uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I've seen demonic influences attach themselves to people. And I've had demons speak to me uh, during times of deliverance. I've had, I've had demonic forces that, uh, that speak to somebody and pray over them to get them set free. And their voices change and their accountants change. And the demons will talk back to you. And say something like this, let him alone, I'm not coming out. And that's when you either, that's when you better understand and know your authority. Amen. There's a place in the scriptures that, uh, that uh, there was a, a, a demonic force and the sons of Sceva tried to deliver them because they heard it done by, the, uh, by Paul and by the mighty men of God and they tried to uh, get this, uh, this uh, demon-possessed person uh, delivered and, and, and the, the, uh, the authority, the, the devil spoke out and said, Paul I know and Jesus I know, but who are you? So you better know who you are in Christ Jesus. You better know who you are before you do spiritual warfare. That's the reason why I'm teaching this to you this morning so we can have the power and the anointing to be more than conquerors. There's people that need to be set free and delivered and it's only going to happen through the believer. They are powerful. Next thing is they're wicked. They're wicked. Amen. Demonic influences are wicked. They'll lie. They'll not tell the truth. The truth isn't in them. Uh, uh, they'll, uh, they'll put things in front of you to try to bring you down, try to captivate your mind and your thinking like, uh, uh, like the serpent in with Eve, remember? Remember how, how the, the, the serpent um, uh, uh, talked to Eve and, tried to, and, and, and brought her down uh, by, his, by his, his craftiness and wickedness? They're clever. That's another one. They're clever and crafty. Remember when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness? How did Jesus defeat the devil? And this is the way you and I have victory over him is through the word. The word, the word, the word says. Jesus said the word says. Satan quoted the word, but he quoted it wrong. Are you with me? So they're clever. If they can trip you up, if they can trip you up, that's the reason why we need to know the word. That's the reason why the word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. No, we need to walk in the power of God's word. We need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the anointing. Now let me talk about our real battle. There's a real battle going on. I've felt the pressure this week of a real battle going on. Circumstances closing in from one direction and the other. And what, what, if we're not careful, it will derail us or it will, it, it will take us out of the main focus. And most of the time, Satan doesn't want to completely stop you. He just wants to break your focus. 
he can break your focus, if he can get you confused, if he can make you, if he can get you all tied up with insignificant things, so you can, uh, so, so the main thing isn't the main thing anymore. Are you with me? You see, our, we do have a battle. It reminds us uh, that the battle is not against humans. Uh, we do not struggle against flesh and blood. Uh, sometimes we focus on people if it's, uh, it, and we think that they're the problem and they're the source. Someone's talking bad about you. Someone's putting you down. Uh, you find out uh, that, that, that there's uh, somebody that just, keeps, that just keeps derailing you and getting in your way. Many times it's not the person, but Satan has slipped in and using an individual uh, to be able to torment or to be able to break your focus. Those people are unwittingly uh, duped. They don't realize that they've been, uh, they've been uh, uh, mesmerized and duped uh, by the spiritual forces of darkness. And they don't realize what's happening. And many times they even think they're right when they're trying to stop you and, 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 and get in your way. Are you with me? Many times they don't know it. Uh, when they think it's just a bad attitude, you see someone that has an attitude that's really bad, and it seems like all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, they've taken on a, a, a different frame of mind, a, a different approach, and, and you say, "Well, that's just a bad attitude." Uh, yet it may be, it may be a, a evil, a demonic influence that's using them uh, to to uh, to create a problem in your life. Is anybody with me? When someone has hurt us deeply, many times we have to, uh, what we want to do is we want to get defensive. Many times we want to brace up. We want to get back. If we would realize who the real enemy is, uh, we wouldn't be so hard on them maybe. Are you with me? It's easy to say that person is the source of my problem. It's easy to say, well, the reason, uh, the reason I, I'm like I am is because of this person or because of that person. Maybe at that particular time there's been some influence from demonic spiritual wickedness in high places that's caused that uh, person to act wrong and we take an offense against them. Our struggle is not flesh and blood, even though it seems that way at times. It's not flesh and blood. Our struggle's not with flesh. It's not with blood, even though it seems like, uh, like that someone's coming against us. Whenever you realize where the real attack is coming from, uh, you, then you can deal with it in the spiritual realm through prayer, through intercession, uh, through uh, pulling down the strongholds, through binding the enemy and standing on the power of God and recognize that you have authority over those things. Amen? These, these scriptures refer to all kind of demonic powers. They all refer to spiritual warfare and spiritual powers. Uh, they teach us that there's various kinds of demonic powers. There's rulers. Uh, there's a strategy. There's a, uh, there's a, a uh, generals and, and, and captains, and, and they have a chain of command, and we know who the, who, who the main one is, right? It's Satan, right? Satan, Lucifer, that used to be the chosen cherub in, in the heavenlies. And when he fell, he took, uh, he, 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 he took a third of the angels with him. And if he took a third of the angels with him, they're in rebellion against God. And he has a strategy set up uh, that he operates against those and tries to stop us. And we need to realize uh, when we got saved, when we got covered by the blood, when the anointing of God came into my life, now I have authority to take dominion over demonic forces. But there's rulers and then there's authorities and there's powers of darkness in this world and spiritual forces and, and, and evil uh, uh, forces in heavenly realm. We need to understand that. We need to understand uh, that, uh, that many times whenever we're under attack, church, when we're under attack or we're trying to see somebody uh, and, and you'll see it more in, in the in the realm of the unbeliever, the world that we deal with every day. And many times Satan will attach himself to somebody and they'll be in our life and we can't figure out what's going on. Their whole personality changes. Their attitude changes. It seems like they're pressing in against you and the more you try to help, the more you try to give them some deliverance and some help, it seems like you're seeing a, 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 a demonic force that's taking place. That's when we need to say in Jesus' name, we need to be able to have the power and authority to bind it. We need to stand on the word of God and we need to have on the whole armor of God ourselves. Are you with me? 
I look at it like, like when I was in the military, we're all foot soldiers. We're all, we're all in God's army, amen? And there's a vast invisible war uh, taking place uh, that uh, stretches across uh, across our, our 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 earth stretches across the uh, uh, the 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 earth that we live in today. Demonic influences uh, that are reaching out. But I want you to know, God placed the church here. God placed you here. God placed me here to be a a, a soldier of God to stand in, in the gap to be someone that's uh, that's not folding under the pressures uh, of the world system, uh, but to be that light shining bright in the midst of darkness and stand as a soldier of God putting on the whole armor of God, walking in the anointing, walking in the power, walking in victory, and not being defeated. <laughs> Hallelujah. This, ver this verse explains why we must put on the whole armor of God. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, the rulers of darkness, a spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places. Therefore, take on the whole armor of God. Take on the whole armor of God. We need to understand that every part of the armor of God is essential for you and I to have victory. Not only for us, but also, uh, also in the great struggle between good and evil. How many of you know Satan would try to bring everybody down if he could? He'd try to defeat every Christian. He'd try to, he'd try to block everything that good going on. He'd try, to, he'd try to create havoc in our lives. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I want you to know he, Satan is a defeated foe. He was defeated at the cross. He was rendered powerless. And, and he still has some authority if you'll let him. But if you stand with your armor on, stand in the anointing of God, say, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, you you will walk in victory and you will be an overcomer and you will rise up against any attack of the enemy. But we need to realize that. We need to realize it. We can't be just fireside Christians. I'm, I'm saved now, so I'm going to sit around the fireside and I'm just going to in, in, in enjoy the good old life till Jesus takes me home. I don't have to do much anymore. No, we're in a fight. There's a battle going on. There's a war raging. God has his soldiers raised up and strategically located in places that will make a difference. He has evangelists and he has children of God that know how to handle uh, the word of God. He's got people that walk in the presence of God. He's got people that's being salt and light into this world. He's got people like you and me uh, that's been touched by the anointing of God and much is given, much is required. It's up to us to stand as the army of God and walk in the anointing and the power and the presence. We are more than conquerors. We're foot soldiers in this invisible war. We're foot soldiers. Our godly character really does matter. Our struggle uh, against principalities and power really does matter. My ability to be able to bind the strong man really does matter. Are you with me? We need to understand that. Life is a struggle at times. Uh, that we continue uh, till the day we die. We'll continue to have struggles. Uh, there'll be times that it's going to be an easy day, and then there's going to be times that's not going to be so easy. Uh, there's going to be times that it seems like we're just floating through and everything's well. We're walking in the favor of God. Praise God, the victory. And then all of a sudden, it'll seem like when everything's going well, and most of the time it happens when you don't expect it, all of a sudden, bam, you hit a brick wall. You get blasted back and say, what happened? Where'd that come from? Who said that? Man, I thought everything was good. I thought everybody loved me. I thought I was being kind and sweet and wonderful to everybody. Thought I was doing my best. All of a sudden, we're hit with a, a sledgehammer, hits us in the face. We say, like, wow, what happened? You know what happened? Satan realized that you're gaining some ground, and, he's threw a, and, and, and as you're running your race, he threw a log out on the track, and you almost stumbled over it, but you didn't. You saw it coming, so you it jogged to the right and you jogged to the left and you moved around it and you're going forward and you're running the race with power and with the anointing of God and with patience because God is going to see you through. <laughs> Hallelujah. Will he try to stop you? Will he try to make you stumble? Yes. 
but I've got this power. I've got this anointing. I've got this Holy Ghost that's moving with me. I got the Holy Ghost as my coach. I've got a God, the righteous judge, just sitting up in the judge's chamber watching me run my race. Praise God. And he's, and he's cheering me on. I got Jesus Christ just standing at the finish line saying, come on, you can make it. Come on, you can make it. I ran this race before you. Come on. Come on. Bring it through. Bring it through. Come on. Come on. And you cross that finish line and you break through with victory. Hallelujah. What is Satan trying to do to our life? What's he trying to do? He wants to frustrate God's plan in your life. He wants to stop you from going forward for what God has for you because what has God what God has for you is more important than anything else. Because what God has for you is vital. What God has for you is eternal. What God has for you is a witness and a testimony. What God has for you is your light shining bright. So he wants to stop that. He wants to get you off track. He wants you to, he, he wants you to stop doing God's will. He wants you to say something like this. Man, if God really loved me, how can this happen? He wants you to say something like this. If God is really there, well, then why didn't he stop that from happening in my life? But you know, you, what we have to do is we have to say, Lord, we know, and throw the adios, hallelujah. I shout with you, sister, praise God. Hallelujah. We need to understand, uh, we need to understand uh, that when Satan tries to stop us, when he comes in like a flood, God puts up a standard against it, praise God. He can't go any further because the walls are up and the anointing is there. I want you to know uh, that, 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 uh, that he wants to frustrate us. He wants to stop us because the more you go forward, the harder you're pressing forward. When he finds out you're starting to gain ground, he would like to stop you. Uh, but that's when you know you're doing something right. That's when you know you're making ground. That's when you know you got Jesus in your life. That's when you know the Holy Ghost is going to see you through. Hallelujah. Lord, help me this morning. Rarely does he approach us. Rarely. Now, I'm going to tell you how the devil operates. You need to understand. Very seldom does he approach us with an invitation to evil. Are you with me? After all, the devil came up wearing the name tag saying, Hello, my name is the devil. You know, like our greeters have their name tag. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, like Brother Joe, he has his name tag. He's an usher. Well, Satan had a big name tag that says, Hello, I'm the devil. I'm Satan. I'm here to trip you today. How many of you would not fall for that? We're not going to fall for that. And he says something like this, I've come to destroy everything that is good in your life. Well, you would say you're not going to destroy me, Satan, because I know who you are. Because well, I just pulled the cover off of you. You just revealed yourself. You're coming up telling me who you are and telling me what you're going to do. Hey, get out of here, Satan. Get out of my face. Get away from me. He says, he, you would say, he would say, there's no room for you in my life because I am a child of the most high God. I'm covered by the blood. The anointing of God has been in my life. Jesus died on the cross for me. He, so he's not going to come up that way. He'll slip up by making somebody uh, that you least expect, maybe a family member. Sometimes even our, our, our mates uh, can, uh, can be brought under some influence to be able to, uh, to bring us to a place of discouragement. That's the reason why it's so important to be in agreement. That's the reason why husband and wife need to be in agreement. That's the reason why we need to stand together. That's the reason why families need to pray. I'm going to invite every family to be here tonight for communion. When we gather around the Lord's table, you know what we're doing? We're saying to Satan, Satan, I'm under the covenant. I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant, I'm, I, I'm a covenant lady. I, I think one of, the, one of the most important times for family to gather is gather around the Lord's table together. And what we're doing is we're putting up the banner. We're putting up the standard. And we're saying, Satan, just in case you think you're going to trip me up tomorrow, I'm a covenant person. I'm under the blood of Jesus. I've been covered by the blood, and I'm anointed and appointed and called to walk in the presence of God. You can't pull any of your tricks on me. 
If the, if the devil came in and, 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 and was real bold with us, we would know it. But he comes in subtle. He comes in to undermine. He, the Bible says he comes in as an angel of light. Am I right? He comes in as an angel of light. Uh, and and, and what, it, what, what he first what wants to do is he wants to tell us that somebody don't like us. He wants to let us know that, uh, that, we've, been, uh, that we've been hurt by somebody. And then we start to meditate on those things. And then he starts to tell us about the different things in the church maybe that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that he sees that we shouldn't be a part of. So pretty soon he'll get us out of the church and isolate us. And once he gets you away from the church and isolates you, and then he starts to destroy you if he can. Is anybody with me? Why? Because he comes in. He's a counterfeiter. He comes in uh, like an angel of light. How many of you know who the real light is? And Jesus is the light. He's the light of the world. Praise God. And then he says you've been mistreated, maybe make you angry, and maybe get you upset at somebody, and, and pretty soon we start agreeing with him. Listen, don't you agree with anything that the devil has to say because he's a liar and the truth isn't in him. Amen? I believe that Satan's greatest tool is discouragement. I said, I believe that Satan's greatest tool is discouragement. The thing that can slip on you faster than anything else is discouragement. You're trying to do what's right. You're trying to serve God. You're trying to be a good mom, a good dad. You're trying to raise your children in the ways of the Lord. You're working hard. You're, you're, you're providing for your family. And then all of a sudden, somebody comes up and tells you, man, if, if you was acting right, if you was raising your family right, you wouldn't have as many problems. And it blows you right out because you start to get discouraged. You know where that comes from? That's from the devil himself. That's called condemnation. There's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I believe that if, if, if he can't get us with lust, if he can't trap us with anger, if he can't trap us with profanity, if he can't lead you into compromise, if all those things don't work, he'll try to discourage you. And when he tries to discourage you, he'll get you in your cave. He'll get you in your hole somewhere, and he'll start to pull you apart, and your own mind will start to destroy you. Are you with me? So the Scripture says in, the, in verse 13, take up the whole armor of God. Take up the whole armor of God. Well, why the whole armor of God? Because there's some things that each part of that armor has uh, that'll, uh, that'll make the difference. Uh, whenever I was in the army, there were some things we had to do to get ready for battle. There's some things we had to do to get ready for combat. Now, first of all, we had to clean our rifle. My rifle was supposed to be my best friend. I went to bed with it. I, I, I rose up. I never let it get out of my hand in basic training. I had to have my rifle in my hand all the time. I had to know how to clean it in the daytime. I had to know how to take it apart at night. I had to know how to field strip it in the dark and put it back together. I had that rifle was my best friend. Are you with me? And I know how to check, did I have to clean my rifle, but I had to check my ammo. It wasn't somebody else's responsibility. Make sure my ammo was dry. Make sure it was in a place where it was going to be, be protected so when it became time to use it, it was usable. And then I had to put on my flak jacket. I had to put on my, my camo gear. I had to get on my backpack. I had to put my boots on. I had to get ready because when it came time for us to go and we was on one hour alert to go anywhere in the United States or, 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 or in the world, we was ready. We was combat ready. And God's calling some people today to be combat ready. He's saying, put on the whole armor of God. Praise God. He's saying uh, that, uh, that we ought to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel and put on the helmet of peace and pick up the sword of the, of the word of God and the shield of faith, praise God. And put on the breastplate of righteousness so you can stand against the wiles of the devil. And when he starts throwing those darts at you, when he starts throwing those missiles at you, uh, when you think you've done all to stand and you're standing, you've taken three or four shots and, and breastplate's dented a little little bit and your shield's got four or five arrows stuck in it and you're wobbling you're going like this and you're holding it down and he's throwing one and you're trying to catch it and then he got the, your sword you're going like that you're not sure where it's going but at least you're trying to use it and all of a sudden Satan sees that he can't bring you down he throws his last dart after he throws his last missile and it don't hit you and take you down you might look raggedy your helmet might be dented your, your breastplate might be all full of dents you might feel bad you might not think you can make it but you'll stand there like this and say I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus I am an overcomer hallelujah oh listen 
Listen, is it easy? No. Uh, was it, did you have to fight the good fight? Yes. Did you have to overcome? Yes. Did you have the whole armor of God on to protect you? Yes. And you're ready, and you're ready to stand because when you've done all, stand, stand, stand. Don't fold, don't give up, don't quit. Stand. Take up your armor, Christian. When all hell starts to break loose against you, I want you to know that you are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. It says when the day of evil, when the evil day comes, not only one day do we feel great pressure from the enemy, as some people have faced it, an evil day several times. The evil day is sometimes a one day after the other. It might be a series of evil days, but you stand with that armor on. You stand with that helmet on. You stand with those feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. You stand with that shield and that sword and that word of God and watch the power of God flow through you and watch you win the battle every time through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Master, and King. Somebody praise him. After you've done everything, stand. The battle, now over. The Christian stands victorious in the battlefield. There's not only, uh, this isn't only possible, but this is practical. Nothing I've said about Satan indicates that he should win. Nothing that I've told you about how powerful he is, should he should win. You know why? Because Jesus paid the price for me and for you to win the battle. And you have enormous resources available to you every moment when you take the word of God and get that word in your heart thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God the word is the life changing uh, influence that I have and when I get this word in me and it jumps off these pages it's logos on the pages but when it jumps off the pages and gets inside of me and becomes rhema uh, then all of a sudden this word is alive within me and I walk in the power and the anointing uh, that I've read in the book Hallelujah. Would somebody just praise him with me for a minute? In case you need a few, a few reminders, uh, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Uh, James chapter 4 and verse 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. In Revelations 12, 11, and they overcame him. That's Satan uh, by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they wasn't afraid to lay down their own life for the cause of Jesus Christ. When you know who your enemy is, you see, your enemy's not a person. Your enemy's not a family member. Your enemy's not somebody that keeps, seems to be tormenting you. That's not your enemy. Uh, the, 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 those different scenarios are influenced by the real enemy. When you find out who the real enemy is, you'll not take him lightly. When you take God's armor and you're ready to enter battle, you realize you're a soldier in the kingdom of God. You're a soldier that's ready and equipped and prepared to bring down strongholds. You'll defeat the enemy and win every battle every time. The victory's not easy, nor does it come without a struggle, nor does it come without sweat nor does it come without a sacrifice of blood. Every war that's ever been won, every soldier that's ever, ever gone out went out with this attitude, I'm willing to bleed for it. I'm willing to fight. I'm willing to give it my best and die if I have to. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, because they not, did not, they, was willing, they weren't afraid to lay down their life for the cause of Jesus Christ. You cannot live on the strength of yesterday because you won a battle last week. That don't mean that you're through this week. There might be a new challenge tomorrow. There might be another onslaught. There might be another uh, gossip that goes out there about you to tear down your character. There might be all of a sudden you think that everything's good and, and, you, find out, and you find out the worst that could ever be said about you has been said. That's when you have to say, hey, guess what? Satan's after me again. My name must be known in hell. I was fasting and praying uh, one time. It was my time of fasting and praying, seeking God. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, uh, Pastor George Walters, Faith Outreach Center, your name is known in hell. I vibrated for a few minutes. I, 
And all of a sudden, I realized what he was saying. The Spirit of the Lord was saying uh, that God trusted me enough, and he, and he had enough confidence in me, and he gave me, uh, uh, he made a soldier out of me that I can fight the battle, uh, that, uh, that my name is known in hell, and Satan might try to come against me, but I'm ready because the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Praise God. The battle you face may be an unseen battle. But nevertheless, it's real. We talk about the unseen realm being always the good spiritual realm, but it's not necessarily. You know, we, uh, we walk by faith and not by sight, so we say anything in the unseen must be a godly thing. But let me tell you, many times the unseen realm can be d- demonic influences and circumstances that you can't see, and that's the reason it's hard to do battle against it. And let me say one more thing in closing. We do face a defeated foe. I said we face a defeated foe. And Jesus said in John 10, 10, a thief comes to steal and destroy and to kill. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life. Give it to you abundantly. Satan's already been defeated. He knows his number's up. He knows it's all over. There's no need for any Christians to live in fear of the devil. He might be real. He might be powerful. He might be wicked. And he might be clever. But he's also defeated. Is anybody with me? At the cross, at the cross, though he had he's been defeated by Jesus, and 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 he he might have bruised the heel of Jesus. Don't you remember in in, in Genesis three fifteen uh, the curse that was put on uh, on Satan the devil for bringing down Eve? Uh, God said to Satan, uh, said the woman's seed is going to you're going to bruise his heel, but he's going to bruise your head. A heel bruise is a hard bruise. It makes you want to limp, and you, and, but you can still get around. It's an irritating thing, but it doesn't stop you. A head bruise can kill you. So Satan's wounded, wounded to the point where he has defeated the cross, the work of Calvary. Uh, the work has been done. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And, and what I want you to get a hold of this morning, church, is I want you to realize this. Many of the things that come against us and come against you and come against me, whether it's of uh, someone bad mouthing you, someone putting you down, someone tearing down your character, uh, you hit that brick wall, you don't know if you can make it. Many times, many times, it comes from strategy from high places. You know, you know what that means? That means God knows that you're powerful enough uh, to do warfare, and so and Satan's afraid of you, so he's trying to stop you. That's when you gird yourself up, the whole armor of God, and say, I'm more than a conqueror. Say that with me. Say, I'm more than a conqueror. Say, I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Anybody get anything out of this this morning? (laughs) Hallelujah. Every head bowed and every eye closed just for a moment. Maybe you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus as your own personal Savior. Maybe you're here this morning and you're saying, Pastor, I'm pumped up about what you said, but it seems like I'm getting defeated every time I turn around. The devil's turning me every way but loose. If that's the case, I want you to examine where you are with him. Are you a child of God? Have you accepted Jesus as your own personal Savior? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? God forbid, but if you would die tonight, do you know that you got a home in heaven? You're going to spend eternity with him. Maybe you used to serve God. Maybe you were saved. Maybe you're, maybe you're saved, but you lost your joy and you lost your excitement for God because of the cares of the world. And you've allowed, you've allowed Satan to lie to you, excuse me, so many times that now you believe him that you're not worthy of God's joy and you're not worthy of God's grace. Listen, don't you receive that condemnation from him. God loves you with an everlasting, eternal love. There's always a place for you. He wants you to get into mainstream and serve him because time is short. I said time is short. Whatever we're going to do, let's do it. Whatever we're going to do for him, let's do it. If you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I'm not saved or I want to recommit my life to the Lord right now, I've heard you. I want that victory over the enemy. 
I want to walk in the newness of his, uh, of his presence. I want to pray for you. Raise your hand if that's you. If you're here and you need a fresh touch from the Lord right now, raise your hand. Raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. I see both hands up. See your hand. God bless you, brother. There's somebody else by the upraised hand. Say, me too, Pastor. I, I want a fresh touch. I want a fresh anointing. I want to ask Jesus to take over my life afresh today. I see three hands. There's somebody else. Somebody else. Anybody else? By the uplifted hand. I see your hand. God bless you. Bless you. Stand with me, if you will, everybody. Will the elders come to the altar and receive those that need prayer for healing or for touch from God or whatever you might need? We're here to pray for you. And those that just raised your hand, will you slip out of the aisle and meet me right here? Slip out of that aisle and meet me. Let's ask God to give you a fresh touch in your life. Come, come, come. You raised your hand, come. Come on, stand with me. God bless you, sweetheart. God bless you, my brother. Somebody over here, raise your hand. Come. Hallelujah. God bless you, sweetie. What you Listen, my brother and my two sisters are here, ready to let the Lord take over and touch them afresh this morning. So we're going to pray together, and I'm going to ask you, the body of Christ, to pray with them. Well, can we do that? Will you pray? Say, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for touching me this morning. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Make me whole. I confess Jesus Christ as Lord of my life and I acknowledge that God raised Christ from the dead. And Lord, according to your word, I am saved by faith. Now God, I submit myself to you. I ask you to live through me for the rest of my life. Strengthen me and allow me to serve you like I never have before. And I'm committed to you. Thank you, Lord, that my name's written in your book. And I got a home in heaven for eternity in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray right now for the baptism of the Holy Spirit on my sister. Fill her with the Holy Ghost. Anoint her, Jesus. You're the baptizer. Give her power uh, to walk this life. Give her power over the enemy. Give her the strength she needs to be more than a conqueror. Lord, fill her with the Holy Ghost. Fill my brother with the Holy Spirit. Baptize him in the Holy Spirit with the anointing of God. And God, use him, strengthen him, and cause him to walk in victory. Baptize my sister in the Holy Ghost and with power and with the anointing of God. Jesus, you're the baptizer. Fill her with your anointing in a special way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I would like to ask the three of you, go with this couple just for a moment. They're going to put a Bible in your hands, some literature. Let you know you're loved, okay? Give the Lord a hand clap. Is that awesome or what? Okay, listen, here's how how we're going to close the service. How many of you here this morning, you you, you feel like Satan has just kind of put you under a cloud? There just seems like you you just can't get a breakthrough, and, and, and there seems some pressure in your life. Is there anybody here that fits that category? You're just feeling some pressure. You're just feeling some undue pressure. Seems like it, it, it seems like you want to get a breakthrough, but you just can't seem to get it. Is there anybody here in that category? I want you to come down here because I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray that God's going to move in your life in a mighty way. If you need a breakthrough right now, I want you to come. If you need the power of God to overshadow you, maybe it's on a job thing. Maybe it's a family thing. Uh, maybe it could be a personal issue. Maybe there's a personal struggle that you're dealing with, and it just seems like you can't get, get breakthrough. In Jesus' name, we're going to take authority over it. We're going to get a breakthrough right now, right now. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. 
Where's Anson? Come up here. I want you to pray. Hallelujah. Take that mic right there, brother. Praise God. How many of you believe right now? If we pray, you're going to get this breakthrough. How many of you believe with me? How many of you believe? There's some struggles going on. Amen. There's some issues. Some issues. Now let, let me say this to you that are down here. That doesn't mean you don't love the Lord. That doesn't mean that you're not, you're not saved, full of the Holy Ghost and power of God in your life. But what's happened is <clears throat> there's two ways that Satan moves, moves in. I think, I really believe, first of all, uh, that's being possessed by demonic influences. We read that in Scripture. The demoniac was possessed. I don't believe possession can come in a believer's life that's walking with God. But I believe oppression can. I think that oppression, those of you here that are saved, you know the Lord, and you seem like there's this opposition, that's oppression. That's outward oppression. That's not inside. We don't have to cast devils out. Are you with me? But we do have to bind strongholds. We have to bind strongholds uh, uh, that, uh, that Satan has no more dominion and authority in your life because greater is he that is in you. And what's happening is he's tormenting you from the outside. Well, why does he do that? Maybe a door got opened up and you don't know it. Maybe it was a generational thing. Maybe a door got opened up uh, 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 through, the, through parents. And it's been passed down now. But what we need to do is we need to bind that thing. Amen. We're going to take authority over it and bind it. Amen. Now, we've got two people in our church uh, that I believe uh, that, that have a real good sense uh, for uh, binding and loosening and deliverance ministry. And, and that is Pearl and Jim. Pearl and Jim, I want you to come down. And as, as Anson prays, I just want you all lay hands on some of these folks, okay? I got confidence in these people. Brother Jim wrote a book on, on deliverance, on gentle deliverance. Gentle deliverance. That's what Christians need sometimes. And we need some, some gentle touch from the Spirit of God. Be free. Amen. And I want any of our other elders and deacons just walk through this crowd. And we're going to just, we're going to lay hands on you. Just gently lay hands on you. Gentle. And Anson's going to pray, and we're going to believe God for a breakthrough in your life. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Anybody else need this, you feel free to come. And there, everybody else in the church, I want you to reach out towards these folks. How many of you know the devil's not happy with this kind of preaching? How many of you know the devil don't like it? He, he don't mind you being a good little goody two-shoes Christian. He don't, mind, he don't mind you, you know, coming to church. He don't mind you lifting up praise in the Lord uh, just as long as you don't walk right every day. He don't care how high you jump. He just don't want you to walk straight when you hit the ground. Is anybody with me? Get ready, get ready, get ready. We're going to bind the strong man. Go ahead, Anson. If you can lift one hand, lift one hand. Who can lift a hand? Our Lord Jesus says, the works that I do, you shall do also. And he said, greater works than these I shall do. Our master also said, all power, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Our Father, we come in the name of Jesus and we stand on the authority of the word of Almighty God and we come against you, you lying spirits, you tormenting spirit, you spirit of lies and deception. We come against you in the name of Jesus and we set God's people free. We set God's people free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive your freedom. Receive your freedom in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that he that the Son set free is free indeed. Receive freedom from God. Yes. Receive your freedom in the name of Jesus. In the name of Lord, said, Lord, thank you for setting me free. Thank you for setting me free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive it. Receive that prayer. Receive that prayer. Receive it. Now listen, those of you down front, I want you to raise your hand right now and say, I'm free. Say, I'm free. Shout it, shout it so, the, so the devil can hear it. Say, I'm free. I'm free. Glory. Praise him a little bit now. Get a little excitement going on. Praise him a little. Praise him a little. Jump and shout and run about. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Oh! Hallelujah. We have over. 
overcome. Will all the other overcomers sing with me, please? We have overcome. How, 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 how? Tell me. By the blood of the Lamb. By the word of the Lord, oh, we have overcome. Glory to Dios. Hallelujah. We have, come on, worshipers, overcome. more time. You know, you've been know, you know, you've been touched by the Lord this morning. How many of you know, you know, you know, amen. Listen, you know what the next thing is after this? Let's take communion together. Let's gather around tonight at the Lord's table. Let's honor the elements that represent his body and his blood that was shed. And recognize that we are overcomers. And when we gather around that table, we're saying, Lord, Thank you. Thank you. You paid the ultimate price for my victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory a Dios. Say it. Glory a Dios. Okay. Father, we thank you for this morning. We ask for your blessings on each and every one. Give us some rest this afternoon. Bring us back at 6 o'clock. The Lord, we can be in your presence. We can feel your anointing and we can gather around your table. And God will give you praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Turn around and love on somebody and say it was good to be in the house of the Lord.